Okay, hello everyone. We are back with the second part of this Skyrim Special Edition modding guide for Linux. Um, so we have the game installed, the vanilla game installed. It works great, um, but we want to do a bit of modding. Um, so my recommendation is if you just want to do basic modding, um, you don't really have to get too complicated with what you're going to do. Um, if you only want to run maybe like 10 mods or so, then it it's fine to just install them to the Skyrim data directly data directory, um, and so what you can do is if you have downloaded a mod, and so say we have these two mods, live and uh, alternative start live another life. What we can do is we can extract it, and you're gonna get all of these data files for the mod. You're gonna just simply copy these into your data directory, and so then what you can do is you can launch the game. And then when you're in the main menu for the game, there's a mods button. You can click the mods button and then just activate the mod and play the game as you normally would. And I feel like for a, like a really light amount of modding, this is perfectly fine. Um, you really don't need to get more complicated than that. If you don't need SKSE, then you really don't need to do anything more than this. Um, but if you do want to run like a heavier load order with a few more mods, I'm going to cover that right now. Um, and so the thing that we need to do is we need to install our own version of Skyrim Proton, a Proton for Skyrim. This is a special version of Proton that I've made or patched rather that will not crash when you run SKSE 64. If you try to run SKSE 64 right now, um, Proton will just crash. Um, so we have to patch it. And what we can do is you can download this file. Um, I already have it downloaded. It's linked on GitHub. Um, you can extract it. And inside there will be an install proton.sh file. Like the audio fix, we can simply just run this script. And what it will do is it will copy um, the Proton installation to Skyrim, uh, to Steam's data files. We can close the terminal. And from here, we can right click on Skyrim Special Edition in Steam. We can say Properties. And under this last box here, we can choose in this drop down Proton 3.16 4 for Skyrim SE. We want to make sure we're running with this. Otherwise, this patch won't take effect. Next, we need to install SKSE, which maybe you've done before, maybe you haven't, but I'll just run you through it real quick. We've downloaded SKSE 64. I, it's also linked uh, somewhere on the GitHub page. Um, you're gonna extract it, and you're gonna take these four files, and well, three files, one folder. You're gonna copy them, and you're gonna paste them into the Skyrim Special Edition folder, like so. I've already installed it. I'm just going to do it again, just for the sake of demonstration. Great. We've installed SKSE64. We've installed our custom version of Proton. What we need to do is we need to run SKSE64 loader. So if we just click play here right now, it will launch the launcher, which is no good because it won't launch SKSE64. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to set our own custom launch options. By again, going to properties, we're going to say set launch options. And in this box, we are going to paste this command. This command is tricking Steam into running this program. This program is called Xterm. It's a terminal application for many Linux distributions. Um, I put it just as like the default program because I don't know what distribution you're running and terminals are called different things on different distributions. For example, I'm running GNOME desktop. So then I can type in GNOME terminal. If you're running KDE or XS, XCF, X, XFCE, got it. Um, it might be different for you. So we can hit uh, okay, and then close, and then we can hit play. And instead of the launcher la launching, uh, what we'll get is a terminal instead. And so this terminal is like a way 
to run games through Proton in a way. We have to be a bit careful though, because we can't just we can't just type in SKSE64, blah blah blah. No no, we have to give we have to give it the path to Proton. This is the special Proton that we've installed that won't crash with XC, X, uh, Skyrim script extender 64-bit. So then we have to say run, and then we have to give it the executable name. So in this case, it's skse64 underscore loader dot exe. And so now we can hit enter. And it will spit out a lot of errors. And in general, when you launch a terminal through Steam, it will give you a lot of errors. Um, I don't know why, but they can be safely ignored. Um, it will look like it's not doing anything for a really long time, but on average, it probably takes like 30 seconds to launch the game. So once we're in the main menu, we can again hit the tilde key to open our console, and we can type in git skse version, no spaces. We can hit enter. It will return um, SKSC 64 version 2. Point whatever, whatever. This is good. This is exactly what we want because this shows that SKSE is indeed loading Skyrim. And so all of our SKSE mods will work. Great. But what do we do now that we want to install like 100 mods? Um, well, we need to install a modding tool, of course. So to do this, um, I like to use Rybash, and a lot of people hate Rybash because it's kind of complicated. Um, it's really old looking, um, and this is all true, but it works great under Wine, and it works great under Proton, and I've had almost no issues with it. Um, in comparison to um, Mod Organizer, or even Vortex, which give a lot of errors, a lot of problems, and you have to really fight for them, like fight with them to get them to work. Um, Rybash just basically works out of the box. So that's what I'm going to be using here. Um, I've downloaded Rybash from the Nexus mods page. I've chosen the standalone executable version um, simply because it's like you don't have to run the installer then, which is kind of annoying. Um, I'm going to extract it. And inside we'll get this mopey, moppy folder. I'm going to copy it. And again, I'm just going to install it to our Skyrim special edition folder. Okay, so that's here. And inside this folder, we have rybash.exe. And again, I am simply going to run and uh, play the game, and we'll get the terminal. And so what we can do is we can hit the up arrow, and we'll get the last command we ran. And so instead of running Skyrim script extender, I'm going to say moppy opi slash ry ry r r y e yeah um forward slash bash reason why we need to use a forward slash in front of the um, space is because uh, Linux reasons um, we can hit enter ry bash will launch. Um, okay, it'll just warn us that's from a previous attempt. Don't worry about that. Um, so over here, we will get our, our load order for all of the mods that we have installed at the moment, which is none. By default, Rybash will make a bash patch um, it, like, and not activate it, or it will create like an empty plugin for a bash patch. We don't have to do anything with that right now if we don't want to. Um, it will show you your saves if you have any. It will show you your INI edits, which can be really handy. Um, screenshots if you have any. And of course, installers. So the way installers work is if you have downloaded mods, so I have alternative life, live another, alternative site, live another life, what you can do, and quality world map. And what you can do is you can simply just drag these mods into Rybash. And you can say, copy or move, whatever you prefer. I'm going to copy. And then what you can simply do is right click on them and the package and then say install and it will install it will move all of the mod files to your data directory 
but it won't activate the plugin. So you have to activate the plugin like so. And so once we have everything set up the way we want it, we can close Rybash. We can go back to our terminal. We can press up twice to run Skyrim uh, 64, Skyrim script is under 64 bit. We can hit enter. It will again load and take its sweet time loading. Okay, so we can say coc white run again, just to test out to see if our um, map mod is working. And I'm going to hit M. And so we can see that indeed the world map is looking very different. So this means that the mod is working great. From here we can quit. And that's great. That's all perfect. Um, if you're fine and if you're comfortable with running things through the terminal like this, then yeah, that, that works great. Um, but maybe you want it a bit more polished. And what I found out is you can actually, um, you can use um, .desktop files to run um, applications through Proton. Um, and so in the GitHub, I've provided a template.desktop. And I'm just going to run through how I would set up Rybash to run through a desktop file. Um, so if you don't know, a desktop file is like a shortcut for Linux, and you can edit it with your text editor. And so in this template, basically you need to provide a name of the application. So in this case, it's going to be Rybash. And then we also need to provide the path to the exe that we want to be ran. Um, so in this case, we need to link this full path. Um, and instead of typing all this, I'm kind of lazy. And I just like to open a terminal. And I like to say pwd, print working directory. And then I just like to copy this. And this gives us the full path. And so we can go like this, and we can say slash ry backslash bash. And be careful because we also need to add backslashes here because there's a space, because Linux. So now we can say save. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. Uh, we're going to call it ry, just to be quick. I'm going to double click it. We're going to say trust and launch and Rybash will launch. So this is great. So now we have a working shortcut for Rybash and we don't have to run it through the terminal. And if you want it to show up in your menu, what you, what you can do is you can go to your home folder. We can go to dot local. Again, if you don't see your hidden files, you have to hit control H. We can go to dot local. I believe it's share and in applications and you can see I've already installed it once before, but you can just copy this into your uh, applications and then it will show up in your, it will show up in your uh, menu here like so. And so then you can just simply run it like you would run another application. Um, and you can do this with all sorts of mods. So if you get loot installed, you can also include loot. Um, and so what's, what's great about, um, steam is you can also make a shortcut. So if you right click here and you say, create desktop shortcut, it'll create a desktop shortcut, but then you can just drag that file into your applications folder in dot local share. And then you can also just run Skyrim that way. However, this will not run Skyrim script extender this way. So what we have to do is again, a little trickery with wine uh, or with, with steam rather. Um, 
this is where it gets a little experimental and a little bit maybe not ideal, but it works okay for our purposes. And what we're going to do is we have our we have our command, and so what we what we want it to do is instead of running GNOME terminal, we want it to run we want it to point to the Proton file and we want it to run skseloader.exe. Okay, but we have to provide the exact location of SKSE loader because it doesn't know what it's talking, what, where you're talking about. So again, we're just going to grab the path to SKSE64. I'm going to paste this in here. I'm again going to put some backslashes in because money. I'm going to go like this. I believe so. I need to make this a bit longer so you can see. Yes, this looks good. Um, yep, we can copy this whole thing. I'll also put this on GitHub so like you don't have to type it out. <laughs> um, we're going to go again to go to properties. We're going to say set launch options like so. We're going to hit OK. I'm going to close this. We're going to hit play. Again, it'll take a few seconds because do you remember in the terminal how it kind of took a really long time for SKSE to load? Um, if it says running down here, then it means it is working on it and it is doing something. It's just kind of slow. So eventually it'll run. And we can just double check that SKSE is indeed loaded. And it is, so great. So that is my solution. And in the end, if I just want to run Skyrim, I can go like this. If I want to install some mods, I can just search for Rybash and Rybash is there. I could spell Rybash. And to me, this works great. Um, it's a little bit janky and I apologize if you're a beginner. Um, this is probably like really tricky, um, but if you stick with it, I'm pretty sure you can do it and you'll learn a lot along the way. Um, if you have any questions um, or any issues that you run into, please open something on GitHub. I will not, probably will not reply to YouTube comments because I don't check YouTube that often. Um, and I apologize for the rambling nature of this video. I just kind of didn't really write a script. I just wanted to walk through what I've been doing. Um, maybe in the future, I'll make something a bit more polished or somebody more skilled than I will make like a really nice video about it. Um, anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.